Okay, guys, the endocrine system is where we make chemicals called hormones, and they're secreted by glands. These are some of the glands that are in our body that produce hormones. Okay? Hormones are chemicals that can influence a cell's activity by either entering into the cell, right? Here's a cell. Here's a hormone. It can go into the cell and cause some sort of change, or it can bond to a receptor, right? Here's a hormone, bonds to a receptor, and then cause some sort of response inside of that cell. Hormones have to travel in the bloodstream. So here's a cell called a secretory cell of some sort of gland. Let's say it's of the pituitary gland, right? It will produce a hormone. In this case, let's, the hormone is ACTH, okay? Adrenocorticotropic hormone. And it has to travel through the blood. That's the key here. This is the blood. This is a test question for tomorrow. The hormone will travel through the blood and then reach a target cell. Here's the target cell, the cells of the adrenal gland. Here's the target cell. And the hormone will bond to the cells of the target cell and then cause some sort of response. Okay? And this could be the production of cortisol or any other hormone that the adrenal gland produces. The hypothalamus, we're going to go over seven of the major glands. The hypothalamus... It's kind of like the quarterback, or well, actually not the quarterback. Let's think about it, the coach of the endocrine system. I think of the quarterback as the pituitary gland. Uh, it's within the brain, and it kind of activates the pituitary gland and tells it what to do. So it's, it's a gland that tells another gland what to secrete. The pituitary gland produces many different hormones. We're not going to get into all of them now. There's two parts of the pituitary gland. We have the anterior and posterior pituitary gland. Uh... GH, growth hormone, follicle-stimulating hormone is another one. Uh, you know, this has to do with growing. This has to do with um, your ovulation cycles, right, luteinizing hormone. We produce things like prolactin, um, which uh, helps the production of milk, oxytocin, right? It has to do with pregnancy, uh, con contraction of the uterus and the release of milk, uh, something called ADH which regulates uh, water levels in the blood, blood pressure. Lots of things going on with the pituitary gland. Thyroid gland. Has anybody ever you know, known anybody to have a, maybe a, a weight problem because they've had a, a thyroid problem, okay? Either hyperthyroid or hypothyroidism. This produces thyroxine. This is your metabolic hormone. That's an E. Thyroxine. Now, remember, if you don't have iodine, Right to produce thyroxine, this thing starts to swell and makes a what? Remember that goiter, the big giant swell on the side of your neck. So th the thyroid is regulating your metabolism. You can either have too much or too little. The thymus is right above the heart, kind of withers away as we get older. This is what mature makes our T cells activate and become mature. So this is very much linked to the immune system. Right? Our thymus causes our white blood cells, specifically the T cells, to mature and help fight infection. The adrenal glands, which are located on top of the kidneys, right, right there, produce adrenaline. But the real name for adrenaline is epinephrine. And this activates that fight or flight response, right? Increased heart rate, increased blood pressure, increased respiratory system, right? All that stuff. The pancreas, which is located right here, kind of behind the liver a little bit, this produces insulin and glucagon, okay? After a meal, when our blood sugar goes up, we secrete insulin into the blood and takes the sugar out of our blood, we'll say this is sugar, and stores it into our body cells, specifically our liver. And so here is a bunch of blood sugar kind of linked together, right? This is all linked together into this giant polysaccharide called glycogen. So that's what we do after a meal. That's what your body did today after you ate breakfast, right? I don't know why there's an E at the end of this insulin, guys. It's just high in S-U-L-I-N. Mr. Vera has problems spelling. So what if you haven't eaten for a while? Okay, you got your glycogen right here. Right, that's your glycogen. 
You guys are getting hungry right now. Guess what? Your blood sugar starts to drop. Right around lunchtime, right now, your blood sugar starts to drop and you secrete something called glucagon. What that does is it tells your blood sugar storage to break down this stuff and release this sugar back into the blood so that we have sugar for our body to use. Our gonads, testes, ovaries, this is what produces testosterone in the men and estrogen in the females that help regulate the reproductive system and secondary sexual characteristics. Now, everybody ever heard of this mind and body connection? How if you're stressed out, it can actually affect you physiologically? Well, really, one of the best examples of that is how the hypothalamus is connected to the pituitary gland and activates the pituitary gland to produce hormones. This is where your nervous and endocrine systems connect. So you can literally be emotionally stressed out and it can cause the production of hormones that will literally affect you physiologically. So yes, is there a connection between mind and body? Absolutely. And the best example is right here. The hypothalamus has cells that literally will release, release neurotransmitters that activate the pituitary gland to produce hormones. Okay, And that will affect tissues and other endocrine glands to also release hormones. So as a part of the central nervous system, it receives kind of information, processes that information, and then activates the endocrine system to turn on its production of hormones. We can have hormonal imbalances that can cause illness like diabetes. Okay, we can have diabetes 1, right, which is you're born with it. This is an autoimmune disease that attacks the pancreas so that it doesn't really produce insulin. Or diabetes 2, right? This is something you develop because you overproduce insulin because you've been eating so much sugar all your life that our body becomes desensitized, right? And we can regulate this. Ooh, Strauss <laughs> going off. Uh, we can regulate this with medicines. You can take insulin shots. My mom takes insulin shots because her body doesn't produce enough insulin. Uh, 